hi so today i'm trying to do what i've never done before and that is try and go live from 1 2 3 4 10 places you know uh because i am certainly very 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 excited today and the reason i'm very very excited today is because we have a very 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 renowned gynecologist who i personally respect a lot and that is dr kiran koilo i don't think dr kiran koilo requires any uh, you know introduction or uh, for that matter i doubt if she is uh, uh, you know not known to any of us she is known to every one of us uh, uh, i think without much ado i should start immediately by inviting her uh, on instagram on facebook yes all of us will have to have n number of questions for her my name is khyati rupani and uh, i am just going to be sending her an invite asap that is just going and searching for dr kiran so i hope all of you have your entire portfolio of making sure that we are on track as far as dr kiran is concerned uh go live with uh, let me see if i can invite dr kiran uh here we go dr kiran dr kiran is i think still uh taking her time to come online she is online now and i have added her and sent her a request uh dr kiran koilo has been uh, or has played a major role in uh, especially uh, my transfer so now we are online okay yes 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 hi how are you doctor shall we put on my live video also yes you are already live you are live on instagram facebook yes just go live so dr kiran koilo has personally helped me myself battle pcos 12 years ago and as a result of which today i am at 55 kgs from 99 kgs and a mother of a beautiful 10 year old uh when i remember when i went to her again uh, she was uh, very very uh, she didn't recognize no. me she said what have you done what have you done to yourself and that is when our relationship started once again so doctor uh, i think uh, you are able to hear us i am able to hear you very well but uh, yeah oh that's fine yeah so we are ready ready to go we are ready to go oh okay what so i don't I know have... what the time face time live whether that is yeah. okay okay fine we are on on both sides Awesome. Instagram. So let's start. Yes. So as you know that I have sent you, you know, a truckload of questions where uh, we have asked uh, our, uh, you know, followers to give their uh, questions. So question number one, uh, which is a very basic uh, question that I think uh, every girl has gone through, and uh, uh, here is a mother who is asking us. Uh, what can help menstrual pain in young girls and oh she's also said also for older women approaching menopause so uh, can we first let's let's help uh, address the issue of menstrual pain is it normal to have a doctor absolutely almost 90% of menstruating women do get menstrual pain which is known as dysmenorrhea now there are two types of menstrual pain one is spasmodic that is during periods for young girls now all young girls as they uh, always have menstrual pain and that is because what is menstruation actually it is shedding of the lining of the uterus every month now when the lining of the uterus is shed the uterus has muscle has to go into a contraction to push up the clots and in a young girl who's never if the mouth of the uterus has never opened for a delivery that is accompanied by severe spasmodic pain now some girls it's like a varied spectrum some girls have no pain some girls have got so much pain that they have to be hospitalized and they have to give them injections so now what can we do for these young girls we can give them pain relief during the anti spasmodic pain relief during the period so taking one or two as anti spasmodics during a period is not going to harm the girl at all in fact it will give her pain relief also some girls This pain is associated with nausea and loose motions. 
for which we can give them an anti uh, um, tablet for um, anti acidic tablet like pan b40 or something and also a little hot water bag will go a long way so this is spasmodic dysmenorrhea now the other type of dysmenorrhea or painful periods is in older women they have already had babies but yet at the same time during periods they get severe pain it starts with the period and sometimes it continues even beyond the period now this this kind of pain we have to investigate because there could be many other reasons also for this kind of pain there could be fibroids in the uterus there could be polyps or growths inside the uterus there could be also a condition called endometriosis in endometriosis i think that was another question yes in yes endometriosis, what happens is the lining of the uterus what happens every month the lining of the uterus comes out in the form of a monthly period now in some women unfortunately the lining of the uterus is present outside the uterus on the ovaries in the on the back on the rectum sometimes even in the bladder so every month when there's bleeding outside there's bleeding inside as well resulting in severe pain now this pain of endometriosis we have to investigate this we have to do an ultrasound rule out other fibroids is there in the ovary are there chocolate cysts is there endometriosis and then treat accordingly right so there was another question medical treatment of polycystic ovaries i think that yes that almost everybody has asked polycystic ovaries is a big big question and right now also on live somebody has asked us about taking diane 35 i know so let us talk about polycystic ovaries i just wanted to see that uh, just a moment kathy since you're the expert my video is on on my um, facebook but i'm not getting any questions or anything how is that because uh, you are yes yes you're audible there but then that screen is not moving yet give it some time if it comes i will ask you i'm reading them don't worry okay but uh, is my picture no, on no. yes it is on but nothing is coming all right that's fine so let's go back to polycystic ovaries yes pcos or polycystic ovarian syndrome is a hormonal imbalance unfortunately it is the this generation this generation x it's almost endemic like diabetes is the capital india is the capital of diabetes india is all urban india is also the capital of pcos we have estimated that one out of every 3 adolescent girls and one out of every 5 women in their reproductive age have pcos and the reason is lifestyle change you see we have fast food we are more sedentary we have so much of stress and as a result of which there is hormonal imbalance now this hormonal imbalance now what happens every month from when the girl gets her first period till the last period of men- menopause every month the egg one egg is released by the ovaries so first you have the period which is the shedding of the lining of the uterus then because of the particular hormones every month one egg ripens 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 as it ripens it produces estrogen which causes the lining to form then on the 14th day it ruptures then the lining increases to prepare the uterus for a likely pregnancy but what happens every month the egg dies out the hormones are withdrawn and the lining comes out in the form of the monthly period so this cyclical event is actually happens because of a good balance between the pituitary hormones and the ovarian hormones and the lining of the uterus now because of stress the pituitary hormones go abnormal and there the balance goes so what happens is every month the egg ripens it doesn't rupture it remains inside the ovary and starts producing male hormones it also causes increase in insulin so even though these girls are not diabetic they have high insulin levels as a result of which there's a wide spectrum there are young girls who have who are slim and still have polycystic ovaries and there are women who are very fat obese with hair on their face that's the other end of the spectrum so therefore because of these unruptured eggs which are accumulating inside the ovary these eggs start producing male hormones as a result of which you get acne pimples hair growth on the face they also cause insulin resistance as a result of which no matter what how much you diet and how much you eat and how much you exercise whatever you eat goes to fat and fat yes. starts yeah and the third thing is irregular periods and infertility so treatment of polycystic ovaries depends on the age of the patient the severity of her symptoms 
whether she has any hormonal imbalance and whether she wants to have a baby whether she want if she's young then we would like to regulate her cycles with oral contraceptives if she's in the reproductive age group we can give her fertility stimulating tablets and if her male hormones are high we give anti androgens or anti male hormones and if her and she wants to conceive we can stimulate ovulation but the basis of treatment in all age groups polycystic ovaries is threefold and one does not go without the other so the basic thing is lifestyle change diet which where you come in happen diet exercise medication so all they are form a triad of triangle so one without the other won't work so if you may take tablets but you still eat and you are sedentary it's not going to work yes in fact you are one of those gynecologists who recommend uh, you know your clients to me for a diet program for pcos and you do a wonderful job kathy <laughs> thank you big now i have one question doctor uh when you say pcos um you know is happening in every uh, girl it, the girl could be underweight the girl could be overweight and the girl could be at any uh stage in her life so yes. when we are talking about uh, you know today whenever anyone actually comes uh, uh, to me uh by default at i i mean it, it it can be anyone it can be right from 16 up till 35 the first thing they are doing is having diet for 8 9 months now how uh, convenient or how um, how practical is that because it becomes very difficult for me or a nutritionist to then come in and get them on a weight loss uh, cycle and so is it is dian or is a contraceptive pill the treatment all the time no again i come back to what i already said uh, kathy yes first thing in a young girl we have to see all the various symptoms and do her hormone evaluation she could be having a high prolactin level she could be having thyroid dysfunction she could be having increased insulin she could be having increased male hormones so dial 35 is not given to all patients ideally speaking a young girl who comes with polycystic ovaries we will try diet lifestyle change stress management and exercise first because with each gram of fat that she loses her chances of ovulation are better for which i'll tell you the trigger for the egg to be released is estrogen in the blood stream now when we put on weight the estrogen in the blood stream sits in the fat cells and forms estrogen so every month the level of estrogen is not that much to cause the egg to rupture and that's why it accumulates so if we can ensure that she has lost weight she automatically will start getting her periods without any problem therefore Dian 35 or all these low dose oral contraceptive pills, they and Dian etc. and Crisanta, all these also have a anti male hormone. So therefore, suppose a girl is very symptomatic, she's yes. continuously bleed. Her male hormones are very high. She's got hair on the face. She has acne, pimples, which is you know causing her severe distress. Her weight for her weight gain and if her insulin levels are high, we give metformin or we give. insulin resistant anti insulin uh, drugs to treat the insulin resistance so therefore there are many methods just plain weight loss depilation of hair from the face and also a exercise medication may help most girls but if the girls are so symptomatic then we have to resort now how long can we give dying i have had girls who are symptomatic with polycystic ovary we give them for years to get i would suggest say 9 months on 3 months off and in the 3 months to the next 6 months her periods will come back to normal then she goes back to being abnormal again we give the medication so it can okay. it will help because very often these girls if their insulin levels are high if they are anovulating their ovary ovarian volume increases that are so many unruptured eggs which are going on producing male hormones but just giving them diet and exercise is not they in fact they get you must have noticed so many happy they are saying we are exercising dieting and but not one ounce are we losing and then lose hope so these who do their hormone evaluation definitely give them treatment and once they are back to normal and their weight also comes down with the in uh, sensitizers like metformin yes then we find that they are much better off and sometimes some girls they uh, once they conceive their problem Those away, some girls are not polycystic. They become weight after their babies, and they become polycystic. So 
told that something that is like lifestyle change is so important for me. Yes. Of that, Kathy. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. You fought it. You had a baby. I delivered your baby. Thereafter, you were stick with yourself, and you are a living example that PCOS can be conquered. Yes. My other question to you, doctor, is that uh, whenever they come to me, or whenever they must be coming to you, they think PCOS is a disease which can be cured. And when a mother, uh, when I tell a mother that no, this is a disorder, the mother has a heartbreak. So, uh, can we throw some light on endometriosis and PCOS not being? Uh, there's no cure for it. Uh, can we just explain it to them your way, please? Of course, certainly. As I told you, polycystic ovarian syndrome is not a disease. It's a disorder. It is a syndrome of hormone imbalance. We have to just correct the hormones. They, it yes. may take long. It may come. It may go. Some some phase of your life you're polycystic. Some phase you're not. Time may not suit you. There are many other drugs which can be given, which are lighter, which are low dose. Uh, so many things. So therefore, you can't take medication forever. It is not. I have every day girls coming where mothers crying because you see, in their mothers, our generation and our grandmothers' generation, there was nothing like yes. this. The simple reason is because of increased education, more stress, early, um, you know, uh, no sports. You remember when we were. I mean, We are still younger generation, but my generation we had to do physical exercise. We had hockey, we had cricket, we had football, we had throw ball, we had everything. Nowadays, girls are sedentary. The puppy yes. fat have never used because they have to study. They have their laptops. They have to study. You know, so they are more sedentary than what we were. Now, sedentary young girls, they because of their fat. They are developing polycystic ovaries. So, therefore, the we have to explain to the mothers that this is this is this generation. So, this generation X has PCOS. That's why I told you the incidence is one out of every three adolescent girls, one out of every five women in reproductive age group. The commonest cause is polycystic ovaries. So, lifestyle change, exercise, de-stressing, yoga, and good nutrition, like you, is the answer. It's not a disease. It just has to be managed. That's all. Similarly, endometriosis. Now, endometriosis, we don't know the reason, but we presume that you see every month the lining comes out. But for young girls, mm -hmm. for women who delay their childbearing, they are the ones who have endometriosis. The lining, yes. Uh, yeah, there is backflow of the lining of the uterus through the fallopian tubes, and it falls behind into the pelvic floor. So therefore. This lining now is on the ovaries. It's on the rectum, and this causes severe pain during passing motion, severe pain while passing urine, severe pain during uh, this thing, and infertility because all this bleeding inside causes adhesions. The tissue gets blocked and bleeds. So, what do we do for endometriosis? You know, the ideal age for childbearing is 19 to 25. Who is getting married those days? <laughs> I'm sure people don't get married to 25, 28. And then after they yes. have their career and they want to postpone their childbearing, they are the girls where endometriosis is more common. Now the treatment for endometriosis could be through medication, and it could be the uh, surgical. Now ideally speaking, the treatment for uh, is to stop the bleeding for six to nine months. So the treatment for endometriosis is to get pregnant. So once you are pregnant, then nine months you don't bleed. The lining which is there outside the uterus that dissolves and endometriosis is cured. But in young girls who want to have a baby right now, then for the endometrial tissue to dissolve, we have to stop their periods. We can stop their periods by giving them continuous drugs, low dose oral contraceptive pills, injections like gonadotropin injections or depo preparations which we put in. And they don't get their periods to six to nine months, and that itself will cause the endometrial tissue to resolve. So this is for mild endometriosis. For severe endometriosis, where there are big chocolate, we call them chocolate cysts, because when we chocolate cysts, yeah, we put in a, a laparoscope or like a keyhole surgery, and we see huge cysts in the ovaries, and when we rupture it, more like molten chocolate comes out. So all that collected blood. Now you won't, no one will want to eat chocolate. I don't think everyone now will be eating chocolate. <laughs> so that, uh, those are the chocolate cysts, and uh, we can uh, treat them uh, laparoscopically as well. 
and then encourage the girl to get pregnant. So that is the fatal. Unfortunately, unfortunately, endometriosis is a recurrent a condition and it will only stop once the girl goes into menopause. And we can't ask them to have a baby every year. <laughs> so you have yes, to... yes. But, but the treatment. <laughs> yeah. Tell me. Yes. But the treatments uh, that you just said, okay, giving them those uh, injections, putting them on drugs, all of that. Uh, does it come with its own set of side effects also in terms of weight gain, in terms of, uh, you know, putting fat around the abdomen? Endometriosis is something that whenever, uh, you know, we also get a case, I am taking care of a lot of other aspects, including stress, including regulating the diet with the medication and making sure things are progressing because every time she does something like that and she comes to us, I feel that there is a lot of... Uh, uh, you know, danger to weight gain, which again is putting her in another, uh, you know, condition. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. You see, endometriosis cannot be treated with diet alone. Yes, of course. The pathology, the pathology is that the lining is present outside the uterus. So how do we prevent that? We, we just prevent it by stopping the lining of the uterus from forming altogether. So if there's no lining of the uterus, she doesn't bleed. If she doesn't bleed, she can't bleed internally and all the endometriosis gets dissolved. So that is basic treatment. Yes, all the, uh, all the treatments cause weight gain because all of them cause water retention. Uh, can you check my uh, Facebook? Um, uh, Just one second. I can, I can. Is a picture there or? Oh, uh, wait. Eh, there must be a notification. Uh, doctor, I've got a notification. It's there. Okay. Or I was thinking of doing a Facebook live together again because anyway they are not going to be able to see you or see me together. How do you? What do you say about that? Yeah, I think Instagram live is better. Yes, yes. What's so that? I'm focusing. Yes, I'm focusing here because we are able to help people here. Absolutely. I think this is more interactive, and uh, I've been doing always Instagram live, so I prefer this. No, they are super. Yes, yes. So Garvi is asking us about uh, Diane not being able to suit everyone and what are the effects? I think you just mentioned a lot of them. Uh, we those, have... those as well. yeah. Yes, yes. We have one interesting question. Uh, uh, if my weight is not moving, uh, could it mean that I have hormonal imbalance? Now, this is something that every single person asks us. So uh, can you throw some light on that, doctor? Yes, definitely. If the diet and exercise are what it should be for that period of, for her age group, then definitely there could be a hormone imbalance. The simple thing is on day two of period, take a, we take a proper history, ask what exactly is her diet, what is the extent of her exercise, because you know, each one's exercise and diet is different for everyone else. What you may think is very little is actually too much, you know, or the yes. type of exercise will vary from person to. So a detailed history, a detailed history of menstrual cycle when did it start how frequent is it how many days should it be is it irregular does she have continuous reading uh, you know does she have periods of time where she doesn't have her periods all this history is taken then on day two of period we do a whole lot of hormonal evaluation we evaluate the pituitary hormones that for fsh the lh the prolactin we evaluate her estrogen levels her progesterone levels her male hormone levels like uh, dihydrotestosterone the dhea and also her fasting and postprandial insulin. Now that is the and plus with the sonography. Now these are the basic tests that we do to diagnose whether she has polycystic ovaries. And invariably, just having if you go to the sonologist, so many sonologists frighten the life out of the girls and their mothers. Oh, I can see so many cysts. You got polycystic ovaries. No, that yes. is not here alone. Every young girl, if you have a sonography, you will find multiple unruptured eggs as well. There are certain criteria. There should be at least five to six eggs. This volume of the ovary should be that much. The size of the unruptured follicle should be so much. And that should be correlated with uh, with actual increase in the uh, hormone imbalance and testosterone. Then only we make a diagnosis of polycystic ovaries. So, you know. <laughs> Most of us take it as, oops, I have a hormonal imbalance. I don't think I can ever lose weight, you know. So it is one of our... Uh, uh, to go uh, escape routes. Like which came first, the chick or the egg? 
Yes, yes. So, so I think the polycystic ovaries are the polycystic ovaries causing weight gain. You follow? So it's right, what? but then uh, it's but it's, it's possible. It's possible. It's doable. I'm telling you, you're the living example. So you can do it. All right. Yes, and, and motivation and uh, the right attitude and uh, de stress. Stress is the most important factor. I think. Yes, yes. Just because you know, you see girls just before they have uh, exams or they have boyfriend trouble or athletes, all of them have irregular periods. Or someone like me who you say, Khyati, stop being an overachiever. That is causing stress. You remember you told me that Kathy relax for a bit, you know, things will be fine. So yes, I think half the times it is a lifestyle disorder as you're saying. Uh, I have a very interesting question here. Uh, can a woman with healthy periods in her 40s conceive normally? Yes, why not? There are women after the age, you see the ideal age for childbearing, as I said, is 18 to 35. Now, we, unfortunately, we women have a very short biological lifespan. Say uh, that we are born with millions and millions of eggs. But by the age of 35, that every month that ovulation doesn't happen. After the age from 35 to 40, it occurs very rarely. And after 40, all the eggs are depleted. So there is a wonderful test that we do called anti mullerian hormone or AMH. That gives us the number of fertilizable eggs that we have at any given period of our lives. So therefore, at the age of 40, it's all very individual. Most probably AMH levels are very low and it's difficult to conceive, but not impossible. So therefore, <coughs> I recommend that if you all want to delay their childbearing, who actually want, you know, they are career oriented and they want to wait till 36, 37, 38, then it is wise when they are in their early 30s <coughs> to increase their eggs. So at least they have a, a, a these a young... A fighting eggs. chance. We have it. No, they have a young eggs in the bank. So that if they want to delay their childbearing, yes, they have young eggs and they can, uh, you know, many of them are not married. So they don't, others, if they are married and they want to delay, then we do egg freezing or embryo freezing. But otherwise, egg freezing is an option for these girls. It's not the best option. The best option, I would say, till today is, you know, when you get married, have your babies when you're young. Then you I listen to you. Back. I was yes. a good girl. <laughs> and you can go back to your career, you know? Yes. 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 Now, you know, look at this lockdown. Everybody is actually working from home. So it's possible. And I'm sure this is going to be the new norm later. People will realize that, yes, everything is possible. I'm doing video consultation and everyone said, how will you do video consultation? But yes, even I can even examine the patient through a video consultation. They don't have to come to the hospital. They don't have to expose themselves to the coronavirus. And they yet get everything through a video consultation. So therefore, you can manage your career and your babies very well in today's life. And I, in fact, I, uh, uh, cooperative in this respect. Yes, yes. So, Come back to the ovarian girl and girls uh, waiting for childbearing. No, you must finish your babies when you're young because of the simple fact that your ovaries are, you know, men can conceive even when they're 75, they are a very good time. But eggs will lose their fertility and they become old and they cannot be fertilized after the age, a certain age. Yes, you can by fluke get a pregnancy at 40. It's very unusual. Right, right. But in fact, here, I would definitely like to add in that your decision or, you know, you said that, Kathy, if you want to get away from PCOS, the first thing you should do is you're married, have a baby. Uh, in fact, after that also, I remember being, see, we, we tend to gain weight even after, you know, having a baby. And uh, I wanted to now talk about that norm where uh, everybody thinks that uh, diet in pregnancy and diet post-pregnancy is not important at all. Whereas I was a live example and today we have more than 2,000 clients who are listening to the fact that, you know, I remember you put me on folic acid. I remember, uh, you know, in my sixth month when I went off track and when I had put on a lot of weight, you actually questioned me about my weight and said, Kathy, what are you doing? You must eat healthy. So you were always, you said, Kathy, you won't have a normal delivery this way. Look at your fat. And then you actually told me to cut down on a lot of fats. And 
even after the baby when the weight was still 99 kilos so after trishu was out i remember we seeing the weight and you said kathy you need to start losing weight now the question here in india is that they think that if at all uh, you know you are on a diet diet you're going to be put on a low calorie diet and uh, that is going to affect the baby that is going to affect the uh, you know uh, the the weight uh, or the even the breastfeeding so uh, can we start exactly no yes, so if i have to throw some medical light on it uh, is is it still necessary to eat those laddus doctor is it still necessary to uh, you know not at all those laddus etc were meant for you know north indian climates where it was very cold and they required that much calories but not in our climate we should eat suited to our climate now during pregnancy the weight gain should not be more than 7 to 11 kilos and that to not in the first trimester after the 20th week to the 36th week you would gain half kilo per week and you have to avoid cakes pastry sweets ice creams fried salty food during pregnancy and you have to eat healthy and you as a nutritionist no nutritionist no a good high protein a good uh, calorific diet high protein low fat and lot of green leafy vegetables you don't have to eat for two you just have to eat sensibly now following delivery yes mother feeds the the the, the daughter with all sorts of food as if you're feeding a cow to produce better milk right so all yes those and dink laddus and all the this thing and all the various fats that we have to a certain extent so that it's meant for that the mother should get good nutrition so she produces good amount of milk and to restore all that she's losing the form of calcium iron multivitamins etc but still you can have a balanced diet you don't have to have sugary foods and you don't have there are certain communities where they don't give them anything only water and uh, you know all sorts of uh, or diet so for that the nutritionists like you will come into the picture and actually in the normal delivery you can start exercising even with c section right away and after third month you can do absolutely aerobic exercises and i encourage my women to uh, all my patients to go back to their pre pregnancy weight at the end of 6 months so that is a good goal you can't be like the celebrities and get back your weight within 6 weeks etc it's not possible because there are two groups of muscles which become very lax the one the abdominal wall muscles and the perineal muscles these are the two muscles which become every all my girls tell me oh we've had a baby but look at our tummy it looks like there's another baby inside but that is because for 9 months the muscles have become lax so you have to do abdominal wall crunches and exercises to get the um, the tissue the back tone back tone back yes that is very important so if you're motivated to lose weight you will lose weight and if you don't get, take care of yourself in the postpartum the easiest time to lose weight is in the postpartum period because when you are precisely when you're breastfeeding my gosh every time you breastfeed it's like walking one mile or running a mile you lose so many calories while breastfeeding the uterus also shrinks because it's formed helps in fact in weight loss yes so yes you have to lose weight so if you don't lose weight post partum it stays with you and then you are more prone to get polycystic ovaries there right. and the stress of a new baby the stress of breastfeeding the stress of taking care of yourself or your whole world has changed you're not going to work you're sitting at home you've lost your space there are so many things that a new mother goes through breastfeeding problems there are yes. also not getting enough milk that is so depressing i know i know and uh, in fact i remember uh, day 4 uh, because it was a c section uh, i was there uh, in the hospital and day 4 uh, uh, when i was lying down you came and said why are you lying down you know why are you not walking excuse me kyati wear your belt and out and uh, that is when i asked you and mama was uh, like you know laddu laddu and uh, that is when i when you were i remember discussing that uh, the laddus were a part of the diet when the woman was doing uh, jhadu pocha uh, cooking for the entire family we we didn't have washing machine cultures we didn't have dishwasher cultures and that is why we needed those calories similarly at that time uh, pizzas were not our thing at that time we did not have a diet that was uh, uh, you know rich in biscuits or rich in uh, you know toasts i think yeah so yeah. we didn't have those kind of meals and right now yeah 40 days after delivery stay in bed that was because indian women used to work so hard they don't have this culture anywhere else in the world 
of you know having massage and lying down and you know uh, yes that, that is in india because indian women always work hard and we know it takes 40 days for the uterus to come back to normal size and if you exert during that time you get back ache prolapse all those problems so therefore the for sanctity of 40 days and of course the massage was really to pamper the mother <laughs> yes and that is what uh, today when you know i hear somebody uh, taking a 45 day break that is what i try to tell them that you know in the other countries day 6 and the mother is out and working she's back to office she's pumping the milk she's keeping it for the baby the other question here also is that uh, till i am breastfeeding i am not supposed to go on a diet that is what i uh, thankfully you address that going on a diet does not mean uh, ge- eating salads and in fact that is going to help the mother in fact eating salads itself so yes uh, i think uh, starting uh, you know a good diet plan the moment you deliver and having a food uh, based uh, on galactogogs so if the diet is rich in galactogogs i'm sure the breast milk is also not going to be a problem and beautiful target you have given which was 6 months i think it is still 6 months then we you know uh, doctor what we do is we have a lot of uh, mothers who say till i was breastfeeding i didn't see any gain in weight but after leaving breastfeeding i have put on another 10 now any scientific reason behind that or uh, it's just that they ate all the calories and now the calories are showing absolutely <laughs> just need to that's all right we have uh, i think uh, yes we are live for more than uh, 40 minutes uh, so we have a last 10 minutes and i think uh, there is a very de- beautiful question here that netra is asking us what is the difference between pcod and pcos it's the same it's polycystic ovarian disorder and polycystic ovarian syndrome now syndrome and disorder is synonymous so they both are the same Yes, I. Whereas I, when I was studying, we had PCOD as polycystic ovarian disease. So I think uh, it is disorder. It was ah, so it is disorder, and I think in both the uh, yes. perfect. There are a lot of infertility questions, which I think uh, we should. Uh, yeah, I think I'll just mostly asking about hirsutism. So hirsutism, I've already addressed that. Hirsutism is increased hair on the face, acne, pimples, increase. because of the increase in male hormones which is a part and parcel of ovarian syndrome okay so, so androgens or anti male hormone tablets which can be taken perfect we have one interesting question here dr kiran my periods are scanty and the flow is very less uh it is drops and it only lasts for a day or two um um what do you think this is doctor i know you see regularity is more important than quantum of flow now every woman through her life of menstruation will have periods where she have scanty periods where they very heavy periods like in puberty then soon after the baby they are heavy and then you know very often after girls who have had um, mtps or termination of pregnancies or dncs the lining is scraped up so much that they don't have very heavy periods they have lighter periods sometimes women who have cesarean section because the cleaning is inside because they get a little bit of infection sometimes because of tuberculosis there are reasons why the periods are scanty but if they are scanty and regular there's no cause for concern but if they are scanty irregular that they come once in 3 months 6 months or you continuously bleed a little 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 then there is either a hormonal imbalance or there is some problem inside the uterus which has to be investigated if it's a hormone imbalance then it's better to do all the hormone evaluation and very often you find it's thyroid dysfunction yes there is another question on that itself thyroid and infertility very common yeah thyroid and infertility yes of course thyroid is is the thyroid gland is the conductor of the musical orchestra of the body it's the conductor of all the organs in the body so if the thyroid is dysfunctional then all the other hormones also become dysfunctional Uh, and doctor why is there a rise in hypothyroidism nowadays is it something to do with lifestyle just like pcos very much to do with it's uh, very much to do with uh, lifestyle stress you know do you have puberty goiter uh, also these young girls who have yes puberty they they develop goiter and hypothyroidism and there are maturity onset thyroid that is towards menopause then the thyroid dysfunction sets in so it's a misnomer that once you have thyroid problem for life you have to have medication it's not like that once the stress is reduced your thyroid also comes back to normal and certain areas where there is less iodine in the water 
like in Assam and certain endemic areas where thyroid dysfunction is bad. So it's always better. And we do it for every girl who's trying to conceive, young girls with PCOS, just during, before pregnancy, during pregnancy, afterwards, postpartum. And every time an annual checkup is done, we always check thyroid for thyroid dysfunction. It's very important. Very often, just irregular periods and weight gain is the first sign of thyroid dysfunction. And the first thing they are asked is to go on some tests for PCOS, but pata chalta that the thyroid was malfunctioning. Absolutely. In fact, doctor, we have more than 3,000 clients with thyroid. And um, I'm, uh, I was surprised initially when it used to happen in the beginning of the career. But right now I can easily say that just diet corrections, simple lifestyle corrections. And I have these mails and I have these chats every day that, uh, thyroid medication has dropped or thyroid is down and X, Y, Z. So yeah. doctor, I have uh, just one last question uh, for you. And uh, here the question is actually connected. I feel I'm going through perimenopause. I'm 40 plus. How does it affect weight loss? And uh, what is, is it, uh, is there any impact of uh, this or uh, multiple fertility treatments? Uh, and does it uh, give me a, earlier perimenopause and does it give me more symptoms? Is it long-term infertility treatments that come into the picture? Uh, wonderful questions. First of all, I'll take it in two parts. One is the menopause. The age of menopause has not decreased or increased. It has remained the same. It's from the age of 45 to 50, 55. That's the period and the menopause is stopping of the periods. But before that, there is pre-menopause, menopause and post-menopause. We call it the perimenopause. Now, what happens is, why does menopause occur? It's the same thing that I told you earlier. The eggs have started aging slowly. So the eggs which produce estrogen, they start diminishing and less estrogen is produced. Now, we are women because of estrogen. We have estrogen receptors right from our hair, teeth, eyes, bones, breasts, uh, everywhere. Heart, uh, lungs, vagina. Emotions. <laughs> everywhere there are estrogen receptors. And as we approach menopause, that estrogen becomes less and less. So all our tissues become estrogen deprived. As a result of which you have sagging breasts, thinning hair, mood swings, irritability, dryness of vagina, loss of increase in fat, weight gain, everything. So therefore, it's a it's a it's a phase that every woman goes through. You must have a positive attitude and you can sail through menopause if you realize that these are just symptoms of aging and they're symptoms of estrogen deprivation. In the past, we used to give hormone replacement therapy. For years together, women used to take it and remain young. And now we realize with so many studies that the, that the disadvantages of giving HRT far outweigh the advantages. And therefore, we don't give hormone replacement anymore. What everyone should realize is it's a change everyone goes through. Yes, there's weight gain. This is the time for lifestyle change. This is the time where Kathy Rupani comes in. Lifestyle <laughs> change, positive attitude, weight-bearing exercises. You see the bones, because we get osteoporosis, the bones become strong if we exercise them, the muscles. The muscles are attached to bone. So if we do weight-bearing exercises, then the bones become stronger. You know, estrogen is the one which causes absorption of calcium, prevents the resorption, and also increases the deposition. So when estrogen becomes the less, less calcium is absorbed, all the bone gets missing and less is deposited. So therefore, we have to have alternative methods of taking a lot of calcium in our diet. More milk, yes. the, you know, soybean, beans, fruit, vegetable, ragi, exercise, all yes. that. You know, that diet plays a very important role now. And also yoga, exercises, pranayama, meditation, just to calm the mind. And of course, weight-bearing exercises. Because even exercise produces endorphins, serotonin, which gives a feel-good feeling. So don't look at menopause as the end of an era. It's the beginning of a wonderful new era of freedom. You can't get pregnant. Okay? You are yes. Also, menopause, unfortunately, comes in the time of our lives where there are so many other things also happening. Husband has lost his last promotion. He has retired. Now he's coming and taking the space in the house. Children are giving trouble. Either they are getting married and going away. You have an empty nest. Elderly parents are falling ill. You have to look after them. 
you know and everything comes together with menopause and that's why everyone fears menopause but one need not fear it. with a good diet good exercise good plan and healthy living every woman can sail through menopause how ironical doctor every single phase of our life right from the age trisha is on she's 10 right now and i keep telling her sweetheart you have to eat healthy you don't have to eat packaged foods right up to 16 17 years of age then our child bearing and then comes the menopause and why is it then that we treat ourselves like dustbins most of the women think that oh ye ye khana bach gaya hai so i'm going to eat that oh that is getting wasted in the fridge i'm going to eat that and that is why i think indian women have uh, you know all the disorders we'll have so many osteoporotic women and then we'll have women who have lost all desires but i think the way you're speaking i think everything is about taking care of ourselves first because if we are happy and healthy absolutely but that's the whole point about indian women is that we take care of ourselves last we never go for that annual check up we never you know in fact i have women who come with their daughters in law and say oh acha we have come now you examine and then we find there's a breast lump or they have some problem or you know you know no one takes care of themselves they take care of themselves last they take care of them and you must realize that if you don't take care of yourself then your family will suffer because there will be no one to take care of them so you take exactly first and that is i always tell everyone on your birthday give yourself a birthday gift do an annual check up yes and i say that do a nice <laughs> nutrition there will be no because you remember cancer also early detection of cancer is a complete cure early detection of breast lumps early detection of uterine cancer cervical cancer everything can be treated completely in females if it is detected early and how do you detect early by having your annual check up so that's so important taking care of one yes so thank you doctor i think people are going to love it while there are other questions on diet which i answer but next week or the week after that i think we surely should get together and do a nice sure. facebook live it was a pleasure talking to you i'm like in bliss right now i always keep troubling you and i'm sure i will keep troubling you bye take care thank you very very much for being here so welcome bye bye thank bye bye so that was dr kiran koilo answering all our questions on the medical aspects of diseases and disorders now this is kyati rupani and i will be answering all these questions which are diet related and have come in a question that was very very nice was does acv really work uh, in pcos and uh, when is the best time to consume it so uh, basically what i would like to uh, say here is that apple cider vinegar uh, is again considered a very very big superfood when we talk about superfoods we always think that wo superfood jo hai wo humko bacha ke rakhega and that superfood is going to be the answer to everything in life well that is not the concern here it is not just acv that is going to help you my dear Uh, ankita it is not just acv or apple cider vinegar or taking that one small supplement that is going to help you the other question that is most common is that what is the diet for pcos so for all those who do not know uh, you know my own struggle as dr kiran was rightly saying uh, when i went to dr kiran uh, with irregular periods for the first time i was weighing around 68 kgs i didn't even realize because i was the chief dietitian at leelawati hospital and more than uh, going for a treatment it was like going to say a hello to her so when i went and said hello to her she said kathy why don't we do some hormonal tests and she wrote those things down for me and that is when i realized uh, the hormone reports came and they were all haywire and she said you have polycystic ovaries and the weight gain is a result because of that only so uh, at 68 kg uh, by the time i went back to her again in a month it was 71 kilos a lot of bloating a lot of water retention and a lot of host of other issues had come in and settled down when it comes to these kind of disorders is when she told me that there are two options one is start losing weight asap uh, get into your ideal body weight zone don't have any medications you're too young and second option she gave me was only one which was to get pregnant since i was 26 i got pregnant trishu happened and after that also there was a big battle of the bulge so i battled pcos purely on weight loss and purely on eating very very smartly there were other questions that were related to also endometriosis well at balanced nutrition we have more than 300 cases of endometriosis 
who are doing extremely well given the fact that they were a little overweight and they had a lot of health concerns as well uh if there are any other diet related questions ah somebody is asking me for home remedies for perimenopause home remedies for perimenopause would be definitely one glass of milk or one bowl of curd to deal with your calcium deficiencies there is also something we need to think about and that is making sure that your mood stays in place now when i talk about a mood staying in place you have to realize one thing that you have to eat your greens or you have to have two fruits every day these two fruits will contain good amounts of iron folic acid they will give you copper magnesium chromium and this is what will relax a lot of our depletions that are happening another very important uh, spice that a perimenopausal or a menopausal women could add is half spoon of cinnamon with a pinch of pepper powder make sure you're using it in your tea and i think we'll be good to go when it comes to weight loss with hormonal disorders the only way one can succeed is by going through a very qualified approach of diet and nutrition together if in case you'll need to connect to me please dm us and we'll be happy to help you with every single query that you have on weight loss okay uh, i have somebody who's asking me i've taken dian 35 for my skin for a couple of years stopped it facing a lot of hair fall what can i when can i expect it to stop so fit fits in what i would say is i think you should take a look at your diet i think you should take a look at the amount of biotin the amount of iron the amount of protein and collagen in your diet once you have a diet rich in protein because finally your hair is keratin which is a protein itself and protein is going to be something that is going to take you through and through and help you very very well there were other questions uh, which i will just flip through once and uh, figure if i can answer any if there are any more questions please feel free to put them and i will be happy to answer them diet in pcos is the only way out yes correct thyroid yes can a woman yes agree uh what is the reason for high prolactin in pcos is what someone has asked PCOS as Dr Kiran said it's the pituitary hormone that is a little bit of malfunctioning and because of which i think the chances of PCOS are there my weight is not moving yes that is could be a hormonal imbalance please address why is there hair fall yes i did address your hair fall query uh smita you are having thyroid and pcos what to do the first thing you should do is start having a diet which is very very balanced there is no such thing as going off gluten i have many queries who say that can i become gluten free will my pcos go away can i go dairy free will my pcos go away in fact the importance of calcium and the importance of other nutrients is just laid down in capital letters by dr kiran and that is where i feel that we should be making sure that we have a diet that is very very balanced if you asked me that if i have a diet which is very specific to pcos no it is individual just like the treatment for pcos or hormonal disorders is very very individualistic here the diets also are so make sure that you do not google up your diets if you google up your diets and if you try following something see you may be a pcos with low iron you may be a pcos with a higher amounts of calcium who knows you may be a pcos who has low amount of body fat so for you things change come what may make sure you are speaking to a qualified nutritionist and that is how you will be able to manage your pcos and thyroid which foods uh, you should uh, especially eat to reduce testosterone khyati there is not one single food but yes i would give you uh, foods which are uh, celery uh, kothmir or coriander if you add these uh, and in fact even mint these are going to help you reduce your bloating and uh, the first and foremost what you should do is you should get on a diet plan if you are overweight if you are underweight then also make sure that you are giving us a very very good example is it possible to conceive naturally uh, with pcos and overweight mili i am an example of pcos who was 68 kg when i came to know who became 71 kg when i um, uh, decided that i will have the baby uh, before trisha i became 62 and right now i am 57 kilos it's been 10 years i'm battling pcos and yes i am battling it with just right diet whenever i go to the doctor i uh, the only thing she puts me on is a couple of vitamins here and there to reduce my symptoms just that again bloating 
uh we also have uh you know questions uh on cycle changing from uh 28 days to 45 days what i would say is that uh you know you we need to understand whether you are aging whether you had a bout of stress and whether you have gained weight or are bloated in all these conditions uh, we should look at your diet once and i think that is how we will uh, you know take care of your entire being uh is there a possibility that in spite of the hormones yeah weight loss we discussed uh i think i've pretty much answered all your queries and uh, i will uh, definitely leave you guys with just one message and that message is that please 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 make sure you're taking care of yourselves please make sure that you are making uh, eating smart a very 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 big part of your lives it was fun having all of you and talking to all of you Uh, if you want to see the story of my transformation and my pictures from 100 kgs to 55 kgs i'll be more than happy to see you on facebook.com/balancednutrition.in or on our website www.balancednutrition.in till then it's bye from khyati and team balance nutrition take care